Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Once again, God has brought us together to um, share a word, say hello to one another. And we just thank God for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I hope that this, this evening find you doing well. And we ask that you continue to keep us in prayer. And as we pray for your safety and your well-being. And waiting for that opportunity to get back together again. We do have a word to share with you this afternoon. We won't be with you long, but we do have a word to share with you this afternoon. And before we get into our word, join me in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good to all of us. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Lord, we just thank you for things being as well as they are in you. We know that you're still in control. We pray, Father, that you continue to watch over us, watch over this, this country, watch over this world. Father, and in your time, I know that you're going to make it all right. We know that this is working together for our good because we love you and because we know that we have purpose. Bless this word today. And Father, let those who hear it be not only hearers, but doers of this word. These and other blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And our word for today comes from the book of Jeremiah, the Old Testament. Come from the book of Jeremiah, that second chapter and that 13th verse. Remember, Jeremiah was that prophet who was prophesying to the southern kingdom or Judah Benjamin. He's also called the weeping prophet. Well, every time you catch Jeremiah, he's somewhere crying. So this is Jeremiah. And at that 13th verse of that second chapter reads as follows. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Amen. And we'd like to talk to you from a thought today, the cure for your thirst, the cure for your thirst. Many of us have suffered at one time or another, suffered thirst, um, needing to, to drink something to satisfy our thirst. We may have been working. We may have been playing we were little, when we were little children. We may have been um, in we may have been in an athletic event when we were in high school, basketball, or football or or something. And and when we exerted ourselves, we became thirsty and we lost fluid through sweating and stuff. And we needed to replenish the fluids that we had lost. And we knew that if we could just get to that that water and, and when we were young in the country, if we could get to that well or if we can get to the spigot, you know, um, we could solve that problem of thirst. This cool, clean water had its way of satisfying or or curing that thirst that we had. It had a way of quenching that thirst. But sometimes water was not available and and we had to drink soda or or Kool-Aid or, or tea. But there was something about drinking those beverages with all that all that sugar and all those other ingredients that didn't set well with us. And and those beverages, although they were cool and and they were wet, they just couldn't do what water could do. And they didn't they didn't make you feel like water would make you feel. They would make you feel all lethargic and 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 broke down instead of making you feel energized. And and I don't know about you, but but I couldn't get my thirst satisfied until I get some I got some cool water down on the inside of me. Somebody know where I'm going. See in our verse today, God told Jeremiah to tell his people that they were contaminating themselves by drinking a water substitute. He told them that they they could drink, they could have good spring water, the spring of living water, or they could drink water from a broken cistern that couldn't hold water. And putting it in plain everyday language, why would anybody want to drink, want to forsake pure spring water? You know how good and cool that well water was from, for a 
that for water that comes from a leaky, nasty, smelly cistern. Yet, yet this is what God is telling the, the people of Judah. This is what you're doing. You have forsaken me. You've given up good stuff. You've given up the real thing, the real water, the pure water for some nasty smelling water that's held in a tank. Hmm. Let's see this thing. Let's break it down even further. When, when the Bible says, when Jeremiah talked about the spring of living water, this is a, this is metaphorical language that is, that is describing or, or alluding to the Lord himself. When God says you could have had a, the spring of living water, God was talking about himself. In other words, this is Jesus talking about himself. And this metaphor is appropriate because the Lord is like a, a, a pure mountain spring that continuously gushes forth, giving life, giving water. And so the Lord is the source of all life. He, he brings forth life and he is the sustainer of all life. See, God is a spring that waters his people so that they will live and they will flourish. I, I heard the Psalm writer said in Psalm 36 and nine, he said, for with you is the fountain of life. I heard Isaiah say in Isaiah 44 and three, he said, for I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. Jesus even says in the New Testament, in the book of John, he says, he who believes in me, as the scripture says, he says, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. And we remember in John 4, when Jesus met the woman at the well, when he had sent the, the disciples into Samaria to buy, buy some meat. And he said, my meat is to do the will of, of him that have sent me. And he was sitting on Jacob's well waiting for them to return. And a woman from the city came. And this was at the noon of the day she came. And Jesus said she was carrying a vessel to get her some water. And Jesus says, give me a drink of water. And she said, wait a minute. She said, now, you know, the Jews and the Samaritans don't have any dealing. Why you ask me for some water? Jesus said, if you only knew <laughs> the gift of God, if you only knew who you were talking to, you, you see, you, I wouldn't be asking you for water, but you would be asking me for water. He said, because the water that you drink from Jacob's well, you're going to thirst again. But the water that I have to give you, he said, you drink it, you'll never thirst Again, I wish I had some help in here. He said, now, if you drink the water that I got, if you drink the stuff that I got, there will be no substitute for it because you'll never thirst again. So he compared himself to a, a, a pure living spring. He said, y'all can drink this, but yet you're choosing to drink from broken cisterns. Now look at broken cisterns. He said these, these cisterns are broken and we got to know what a cistern is. C-I-S-T-E-R-N. Cistern. It's a man-made container that's used to hold and to store water. And if you know anything about cisterns or if you know anything about water that's held in a place for a long time, it can become stagnant. It can become stinking. It can become smelly. It can it can become contaminated. And, and a cistern is metaphorical for an idol that's made by man. <laughs> a cistern is when they dig out the earth or dig out in a rock or and, and they put water in there to store. But the thing about water, it sits in this place. Pure spring water continuously runs so it doesn't get contaminated. But water in a cistern, a man-made container becomes stagnant and it begins to stink and smell. Somebody's going to catch on to what I'm saying. It, it's talking about a, a man-made alternative for something to store water in. If we look at it in a spiritual sense, it is a man-made alternative for the Lord himself. Remember, this pure spring water, this spring of living water represents God, but a cistern represents an idol. Let's go even deeper in this. Like, like a cistern that contains water muddied by the earthen structure that contains it, idols are a poor substitute for the Lord. That's what an idol is. An idol is something that you have in place of God. And God is telling the people of Judah, he told Jeremiah to tell them, you have replaced me 
will the water substitute? <laughs> you have put something in the place of me and it'll never work. Idols are broken systems, cisterns that leak out whatever limited amount of stinking and noxious water that actually they actually do contain. In other words, idol idols can contaminate your spirit just like tainted water can contaminate your body. See, tainted water has all kind of stuff in it, all kind of bacteria, all types of fungi in it. And when you take it into your body, you that stuff becomes a part of you. Just like in your spirit, if you start taking in the things of an idol, then that idol becomes a part of you. I wish I had somebody with me today. See, people who drink from cisterns rather than from the mountain springs have committed two sins. God says they committed two sins. The first sin that they've committed is that they've forsaken the one true God, which means that they've turned their backs on God. Then in other words, they're telling God, we don't need you any longer. The second sin in this verse that's found, it says that they have set up themselves an alternative deity. Since there is only one true God, if you reject him, the only alternative is to create one for yourself. And there is no way that you can create anything that's greater than God Almighty. Obviously, any deity created by humankind can't match the uncreated Lord above. There's nothing that you can make that's greater than my God. You can ask all of those nations that were here before the children of Israel came up and God brought them up and they'll let you know that there's nobody greater than the God of the Israelites. They'll tell you that when, when I remember when, when Joshua was getting ready to go into Jericho and the spies were sitting in and Rahab told them that everybody in the city were afraid because they had heard of the God of the Hebrews. So when you set up something or an idol and try to let that be your God, then you are making a deadly, a deadly mistake and you are on your way to destruction. Can I get some help in here? See, some of you, some of you might be saying, some of you might be saying right now that you don't have any cisterns or you don't have any idols. That was way back then and it doesn't happen today. Well, let's call the roll. How many of you trust your money more than you trust your God? How many of you trust your, your, your spouse or your significant other more than you trust your God? How many of you trust your job more than you trust your God? How many of you trust your education more than you trust your God? How many of you trust your pastor more than you trust your God? See, all of these things right here, all of these things right here can become cisterns in your life. They can become idols in your life. And, and, and all of these things can cause you to be on your way to destruction. So today, the question is, the question is, how are you trying to cure your thirst? Or what is the cure for your thirst? My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that any attempt to quench your thirst from a broken system will only lead to disappointment. Any attempt to find life in something that you have set up yourself is the ultimate source of life will actually minister death to you. There is no good man-made alternative to fresh spring water. Ultimately, the only, the only thing that you can take to satisfy your thirst, the only thing that you can put down on the inside of you to cure that thirst in your spirit is the thing that Jesus told that woman at the well, you got to drink me. You got to take me on the inside of you. And this is the only way you can cure that thirst for life. So the cure for your thirst is Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters. You got to have, I don't care what's missing in your life. Anything that's missing in your life is a thirst. And I want to tell you today, Jesus is the cure for that thirst. Any kind of void you have in your life, Jesus is the one to fill that void. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. 
We thank God for everything that he has done for. We thank God for being that cure. We thank God for being that filler, that, that, the, the one that satisfied every place. Jesus is all you need. See folks saying, well, Jesus can't do this. Jesus can't. No, my God will supply. My God will provide. My God will sustain. My God is everything. David says that the Lord is my shepherd. But they, and I shall not want, shouldn't want, shouldn't want anything, shouldn't want what, David? Anything that I need to survive in this life, God's got it. So everything I need, I got it in Jesus. So Jesus is the cure to our thirst this evening. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We hope that we've said something that has encouraged you, that have caused you to think about the things in your life that you are putting before God. God said, don't put anything before me because I am, I am life itself. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Jesus is a cure for your thirst. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. And we hope that you are staying safe and you are abiding by the rules of the CDC and the Department of Public Health. You're practicing public um, um, social distancing. You're protecting yourself. Continue to do that. We ask that you continue to keep us in prayer as we go forth. And our children also that's in school, that's surrounding themselves by, by, by other children who who uh, children have a young people have a way of feeling that that things can't happen to them and we have we have adults who are not who are not being good role models as well by not covering themselves up and all but i'm telling you today i'm encouraging you make sure that you are washing your hands you're wearing your mask and you're doing what you need to do to stay safe amen amen and until next time my brothers and sisters we will not be um, there at the church this Saturday. So, um, you know, just hold everything you got. Amen. And keep it until next time. And we've, we've put up our dress, our dress before and, um, to mail it in. And that's Miss Baptist Church, PO box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. God bless you. I love you. May heaven smile upon you. And we'll hope that we hope to see you soon. God bless you. Good afternoon.